kahapon lang kausap ko pa si Daddy. Masaya siya dahil nakapasa ako sa exams. Uuwi daw siya sa November 21. November 15 po, nung pagising ko nung umaga or madaling araw, sabi na, sinabi na po ni Mami na patay na si Daddy. So, umiyak po ako nun. My name is Cameron Rogers. A friend of mine, Chida Pantig, asked me to record a quick video on my memories of Leonard Ko, um, who I met when he was a student studying acupuncture at the center where um, I was teaching at the time. That was 1985. Um, Leonard was one of the better students, though. He actually had a vast knowledge of the indigenous herbs of the Philippines, um, something where he was able to teach me more than a thing or two. Um, his ability to um, identify various herbs, to process them, to use them therapeutically was quite a skill. Um, so Leonard came, came as a highly skilled botanist but already in 1985. Um, I had a lot of respect for Leonard. Um, he had like-minded views to me as far as um, human rights and trying to be in service of the people of the Philippines. Um, he was a brilliant man and his passing um, was quite a shock and very, very unfortunate and has robbed society of one of the great academic minds of our time. Uh, Leonard not only had ability with herbs and was a good student of acupuncture, um, he, he was a funny guy and, and he, he was a character. Uh, that, that's the best way I can describe it. He'd come up with this quite brilliant board game and uh, it really had potential. Uh, and uh, we played it a couple of times. Um, the first time we had a decent battle and he, I think, you know, I'm pretty sure he won that one. Um, but I worked out a flaw in the game, um, which meant that basically if you got to go first, you could guarantee that you were going to win. And uh, I started stacking, because it had these little square pieces, I started stacking up randomly around my line, my little pieces into, into groups of three. And he was, he collected a, a decent force on his side and was coming across the board at me. As soon as he'd moved away from his line, I knew I had him. And as he was coming across the board, he was kind of giving a puzzled look at what was I doing? Why wasn't I leaving my area? And then gradually my stacks, I started, once they were all in groups of three, I started stacking them together, making one gigantic force. And I could see his puzzlement turned to horror <laughs> as he realized what I was doing and um, yeah that, that was that was funny and I, it was very satisfying to beat Leonard at his own game because he, he you know he was a, he was a good strategist and he was he, the game was was quite good it was a bit like playing chess but with with like variable forces depending how you put your pieces together and one thing I learned from people like Leonard was that you always need to be questioning. You need to question your assumptions uh, on any subject rather than just rote learning, taking it at face value, that you want to get into the nuts and bolts of how things actually work. Um, later on, I, I published a book um, in conjunction with my mother um, the Point Location and Point Dynamics Manual. And Carol had already created a Point Location book, but what I tried to include in that was the Point Dynamics, 
not just what the points do, but how do they do it? Like, what is the mechanism in Chinese medicine that is being tapped into when you use an acupuncture point? The dynamics, so not just the what you use, but why you use it. And by understanding the mechanisms in traditional Chinese theory of what happens in the body from qi production, um, etc., to look at what a point does, what its relationships are. I think my experience in the Philippines um, helped to crystallize the idea of, of point functionality um, to the point of understanding the mechanisms behind it. And I think it's students like Leonard that really helped me to question my own assumptions about acupuncture and how it worked and a better approach. Um, as I say, Leonard, Leonard was very good um, with his herbal medicines, with his botany, and I had the utmost respect for Leonard. Um, and basically, you know, that's my experience with Leonard Kale and the students in the Philippines. Um, it did, I, I learned a lot from people like Leonard. So, yeah, it's with great sadness that, that he passed on my part. As I say, a loss to the world, not just the Philippines. And, yeah, never should have happened. Ako po ay si Chito Pantig. Chito ang tawag sa akin ng marami. Doc Chito, Doc, o Boss Chito naman, ang tawag ng ilan. Una ko nakilala si Leonard noong 1976. Ika-apat na taon ng batas militar ni Marcos. Noong mga panahon na yun, marami ng mga Pilipino ang kumakayod sa kahirapan at marami rin ang di kaya magpatingin sa mga doktor. Nasa unang taon ako noon ng aking pag-aaral sa medisina at nagsimulang maghanap ng mga solusyon sa mga problema ng pangkalusugan ng bayan. Sa aking pananon noon, ang isang paraan ay sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng mga alamang gamot. Sa aking pagnanais, na mangalap ng karagdagang mga impormasyon sa herbal medicine. Naghanap ako ng mga otoridad sa larangang ito. Ang pangalan ni Leonard ang isa sa mga pangalan na ibinigay sa akin ng aking mga kakilala. Doon ko raw siya matatagpuan sa UP Herbarium. Kaya, nagbakasakali akong bisitahin siya. Pagkatapos ako magpakilala, pinapasok ako ni Leonard sa kanyang opisina at paraiso. Puno ng mga libro, papel, halaman, at pinutuyong mga halaman. Masigasig at masaya niyang pinakilala sa akin ang mundo ng mga halaman at mga halaman na ginagamit sa pagagamot at malugod din niyang sinagot ang aking mga tanong. Hindi nagtagal at pinabangha niya ako. Diyos ko po, ang kanyang karunungan, nakakalunod. Ito yata ang isa sa mga katwiran kung bakit parang may mental block ako sa herbal medicine. Isip-isip ko nun, hindi ko yata ito kaya. Ang kaalaman ni Leonard ay di lang sa mga halaman gamot kundi sa akipuncture din. Siya ang nagsimula sa akin ang akipuncture. Ang ta ang, kung tama ang akin natatandaan, siya ang unang nagtusok sa akin ang akipuncture needle. Noong una ko siyang nakilala, akala ko profesor siya sa UP. Pero wala siyang pag-aalilangan, di nahihiya. At matapat niyang sinabi sa akin na estudyante pa lang siya. At di pa niya natatapos ang kanyang chemistry. Tahimik ko na lang inisip sa aking sarili na talaga nga naman nakakaibang tao ito. Inipita namin si Leonard sa aming ekspedisyon. Masaya siyang subama. Naalala kong kung papaano ako nag-enjoy nung nakasama ko si Leonard. Punong-puno siya ng mga kwento. Madali rin siya nakipagsalamuha sa mga lokal na mamamayan. Siya ang naging isa sa akin mga modelo kung papaano dapat makitungo ang isang health professional sa mga tao. Tawag ko sa kanya walking encyclopedia. Pero hinding hindi siya kahit isang beses na narinig ko siyang magmayabang. Bagaman, nakatutok si Leonard sa plant taxonomy, ethnobotany at medicinal herbs. Siya ang isa sa ilang mga tao na may kaalaman sa akipuncture. Dahil dito, nanyayahan siya na magbigay ng ilang maiikling training sa mga taong interesado sa pagagamot sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng karayo. Bago ako lumuwas papalik ng Australia, natandaan ko na binulungan ko siya. Na kung, may na, na kung may mag alok sa kanya ng scholarship sa ibang bansa, natanggapin niya ito. Mas marami siyang matututunan at mas marami siyang may bibigay sa bayan. Sa tansya ko noon, 
hindi niya narinig ang aking mga payo. Nalungko sa ako noon, mga 1989, 1990, nung aking malaman na, tumi- na tumiwalag siya sa ATRC, bumalik siya sa, kanilang, sa kanyang minamahal na gawain sa fieldwork. Hindi ko na siya muling nakita. Si Leonard ay may magandang puso. Simpleng tao. Walang pakundangan. Mapagkumbaba. Hindi hampo. Down to earth na intelektual. Na umaago sa sigla at mga ideya. Napakagaling din niyang magluto. Isa siya sa mga kakaunting dakilang kaluluwa na aking nakilala. Taong 2010. Dumating din ang panahon na dapat ako magpaalam sa isang mabuti at dakilang kaibigan. Tatlong punlo na pinutok ng isang sundalo na mangmang sa kaalaman ng kanyang pinaslang ay isang pambansang kayamanan. Hindi mabubula si Leonard sa aking isipan at puso. Si Leonard ko ay isang mabuting kaibigan. Nag- nagkasama kami noon sa Acupuncture Therapeutic and Research Center kung saan din niya nakilala ang kanyang butihing may bahay na si Glenda. Noong panahon na yon, Tinatapos niya ang pagsulat ng kanyang aklat na Medicinal Plants in the Cordillera Region at tinutulungan namin siya upang ito ay kanyang uh, tuloy-tuloy na maisulat. Sa, pa, sa kasalukuyan, dalawang beses na ito nailimbag at uh, maganda talaga ang kanyang pagkakabuo ng aklat na ito na nagiging reference din natin sa ngayon. Si Leonard bilang isang kasama sa gawain ay napakasipag dahil siya ay marunong magsalita ng Mandarin at bumasa rin ng Chinese character. Kaya niyang i-translate yung Chinese pharmacopoeia sa Ingles o sa Pilipino at binibigyan niya ng equivalent ang mga herbal medicine sa China sa mga halamang gamot dito sa atin. Hindi ko lamang alam na lalaman kung ito ay kanyang naitabi o naitabi ni Glenda Subalit isa itong mayamang uh, sabihin nating isa pisa ng magiging magandang aklat na kanyang mapapublish kung ito ay mahahanap pa. Siya ay isang masayahing tao at mahilig din siya magluto. Kapag kanyang kaarawan, siya ay nagluluto ng patatim upang makainin kaming lahat sa opisina at ang ilan pa niyang mga kaibigan na kanyang inimbita. Uh, Nung ako ay umalis sa aming opisina at lumipat na sa uh, Council for Health and Development, hindi na kami nagkita. Nabalitaan ko na lamang na siya ay nasa UP at tumutulong uh, sa Department of, I think, Biology. Kusa naman nakasama niya ang aking brother-in-law, si Dr. Perry Ong, sa kanyang gawain. Siya ay napatay sampung taon na ang nakarawaan. Matagal na panahon na ito. Habang siya ay gumagawa ng research somewhere in Leyte, meron din siyang team ng mga, sa mga research ay nabaril sila ng military. Hindi ito nabigyan ng hostisya. Hanggang ngayon, ang kanyang pamilya at ang kanyang mga kaibigan ay, ay nanais na ito ay masolusyonan, maparusahan ang mga gumawa nito. At mabigyan ng hostisya ang pagkamatay ng isang mabuti, mabuting tao. Hinihiling ng sa ikasampung taon ng anibersaryo ng pagkamatay. Sana ay mabuksan muli at maging aktibo ang pag sa justice for Leonard. Hindi ka namin makalimutan, Leonard. Maraming salamat. While trekking a Sagada pine forest, I asked Leonard, Leonard, do you believe in God? He answered, I do. And I asked why. He said, look around you. God is everywhere. Leonard peeled a pine bark and kicked the pine needles on the forest floor. He showed me the little grubs and insects. Look, the living earth. And I said, Chicky, I asked, can you define God? Leonard froze. God is the creator and the destroyer, the permanence of the impermanent, the yin and the yang. 
Leonard pulled out his harmonica and played a seeger. He followed the cadence with his marching feet. The forest was hushed as if the flowers and insects paused at listening. Cubs smacked. In memory of Leonard, no worries, mate. Raffi. <laughs> Una kong nakasama si Leonard, siguro mga 48 years ago, nung fourth, first year college kami sa Diliman at magkasama kami sa isang botany class. Doon pa lang namangha na ako sa kanyang kahusayan na matandaan ang mga pangalan ng mga halaman at para saan ang mga ito. At ang kanyang walang uh, sawang pagtuturo sa amin at pagbibigay uh, encouragement sa amin na tandaan itong mga halaman na to dahil malaki ang maitutulong nito sa aming future work. At tama nga siya dahil nung kami ay magkakasama na sa mga field work, ang ganda-ganda ng mga samahan namin, kasama nila ang put na na papaghusay uh, namin ang uh, kaalaman sa botany dahil andyan si Leonard matyagang uh, ina-encourage at tinuturo ang kami. Kaya nung ako'y doktor na sa isang komunidad sa at isang CBHP, Community Based Health Program at uh, kasama ang mga taga Council for Primary Health Care tulad ni Rafi na magkakasama kaming nag-aalal ng traditional medicine tulad ng medicinal plants and acupuncture ay malaking ambag ang tulong ni Leonard sa amin dahil um, napag-aaralan ang mga sangkap nitong mga medicinal, medicine, medicinal plants at na-identify sila at ang pag tuturo nito sa mga community health workers. Magandang araw sa lahat. Uh, una kong nakilala si Leonard noong 1970. Para kaming first year sa Diliman. Uh, Marawal kasi ha. Uh, tapos mas naging kaming magkalapit kasi pare para kaming hiling sa mga laman. No? Uh, si Leonard, no, napakalaki ng passion niya talaga sa alaman. Uh, ang halos uh, alam niya lahat ng mga pangalan ng alaman. At ang maganda kay Leonard, napakabait niya, no, yung share niya yung kanyang mga lahat ng alaman. Paging naman ako ay nagkatrabaho na, at parati ko siya binibisita sa kanyang herbarium sa Department of Botany uh, para mag no magdala ng mga herbal specimen kasi mag-identify ng mga halaman napakabait na naman napaka uh, talagang kita mo bukas sa loob yung uh, pag uh, alam ko na si Leonard ay may ginagawa ng ano, uh, mga parang classification ng mga halaman sa Pilipinas nandoon yung sino ba ang endemic dito Duslan. Mahaba-haba na rin yung kanyang nagawang nagsahal. Pero uh, hindi siya tapos. No? Hindi pa tapos na. Uh, kung naririto si Leonard, uh, talaga ko yun sa napalaking gusto na magagawa niya. Classify yung mga laban kung sila ay ating so ilang uh, at nalimis natin si Leonard at uh, sayang sana kaya pa niyang i-gain ang bag at ang kursi sa botany uh, kabilang na yung mga na magamot na pareho na so magandang araw sa lahat Leonardo ko medicinal plants and tablet making in the barrios my first meeting with Leonardo ko was at the office of the health NGO Chess Corps, Cordillera Health, Education, Services, and Training in the Cordillera Region in Baguio City in August 1981. We were setting up the health NGO and Leonard came. The time, we were looking for a researcher on medicinal plants who will publish a book on research. Leonard applied for the position and was the right person even if he was not yet a botanist. Leonard's assignment was to research Cordillera medicinal plants and publish a book by 1984, the end of Chess Corps' three-year program. We were young then. I was 36 years old when we set up the health NGO. We were the pioneers. Leonard was in his 20s. 
a tall, lanky guy with spectacles. Leonard began his research by purchasing books on medicinal plants in Mandarin. Since he was the only one in the program who knew the language, we couldn't read the books. From his secondary research, I imagine he was able to gather much information for the plant book. For his primary research, he got in touch with Ama, means old man, Domin Eng of Agid Sagada Mountain Province. Leonard would occasionally travel to Sagada to interview Ama, Domin Eng, and he would eventually document 350 plants named by the old man. From results of Leonard's primary and secondary research, he chose 122 common medicinal plants found in the Philippine Cordillera. Aside from research and plants, he wanted illustrations to accompany the text. He went to Manila and was able to find four illustrators, worked according to Leonard's standard of meticulousness. I recall him telling the illustrators, what I would like is for the person to be able to identify the plant from the illustration. So from time to time, I noticed the illustrators referring their work to Leonard to get his approval. In the meantime, with all, he would also conduct seminars on the use of medicinal plants. One time, with members of Chesco's staff, went for a seminar in Mayoya, Ifugao. We stayed overnight in Banawe. In the afternoon, we decided to go out and while walking, he would point to a plant at the mountainside, identify it, and rattle of its characteristics. He was a walking plant encyclopedia. Leonard said he would be unable to finish the book by December 1984, so I decided to publish a compendium of the plants he researched to fulfill one of the objectives of the health program. We launched the book in 1984. He continued writing since he wanted the book not only to be a compendium of medicinal plants but also a trainer's manual for community-based health programs. He wanted to include collection, storage, preparation, and usage of herbal drugs and major constituents, pharmacological and clinical research. Many times he was very serious stopping the manual typewriter day and night to input what he had researched. Could you imagine the days when we were using manual typewriter? It was labor intensive. At times, we would sing some songs at the office. If I remember it right, Leonard accompanied the songs by playing harmonica. During some weekends, he would visit his parents in Manila, and when he returned, he had a lot of load ingredients to be cooked. He would prepare a viand or two, for lunch and we would have a feast. What an excellent cook he was. In early 1989, Leonard published his book entitled Common Medicinal Plants of the Cordillera Region, a trainer's manual for community-based health programs. The next time I met Leonard is in the Netherlands in April 1989, Leiden University in Leiden. The Netherlands invited Leonard to visit the university's herbarium and share information on his book. Aside from Leonard's love for medicinal plants, his other interest at Chesscore was appropriate technology. In his article, Appropriate Technology in Rural Health Work, The Prospect, he wrote, Tablet making in the barrios? Why not? It is in the spirit of such challenge that a group of health workers started experimenting on how to make tablets out of locally available medicinal plants using glutinous rice starch as a binding medium. Even the equipment used in the preparation, of course, we will have to admit the crudeness of the product that resulted from these initial attempts, but there is always room for improvements in the future as the group progresses with the experiments. The most important thing is to start somewhere, to start the ball rolling. During a seminar on making tablets from medicinal plants held in Tokokan, Bontok, Mountain Province in April 1985, Leonard brought along the tablet press from medicinal plants as raw material and glutinous rice starch as binding medium. Leonard was able to produce tablets. Leonard left chess core in the late 1980s 
and had several advocacies in Metro Manila. The Philippines has lost a renowned plant taxonomist whose aim in life is to serve the Filipino people. Among other things, Leonard left his legacy is in the book of the Cordillera Region, a trainer's manual for community-based health programs. Although the book may have its shortcomings, it is still the only book of its kind in the Philippine Cordillera. Ang napabilib ako talaga kay Leonard was his love for plants and how he would describe each one in detail. When you show it to him, plants was his passion. For us in Chescor and friends in the Cordillera, we will remember him for his book. I first met Leonard during my medical school years. He was then working with the Chescor program while attending school at UP Baguio. At that time, he was doing research work and documenting medicinal plants found in the Cordilleras. He was good at identifying plants and can tell the scientific and common names and the uses of plants he would pick along the way while on field assignment. Apart from his vast knowledge of plants, Leonard was always a good cook. He used to sleep at the office and would cook meals for the staff whenever he's around. Even with his cooking, Leonard would use herbs and dried Chinese spices to give taste to the food. I remember Leonard to be unconventional with his activities of daily living. He would only eat when he's hungry, which may only be once or twice a day. I remember his jokes and his showers when he speaks during conversations or discussions. I admire Leonard for his dedication to the cause of Chesco program and his humility and the style of simple living. Now it's been 10 years since he left and it's sickening to learn that justice hasn't been served yet. I know this has not stopped all of our community health workers from pursuing better health for the marginalized sector and providing health care to the communities in need. Rather, they take Leonard's case as an inspiration to continue. Hi, I'm Susie Ellis from the U.S. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Leonard when I was working at Conservation International and I was in charge of the Philippines program. Um, I'm lucky enough to have, have spent some significant time in Asian rainforests and have had the good fortune to see Rafflesia on many occasions. I mean, without fail, I always think about how thrilled Leonard would have been to see them at the same time, too. There was nothing like walking in the forest with Leonard. He made me see plants with new eyes. Um, and I was, I was always impressed, not only with Leonard's botanical knowledge, but with his bubbling enthusiasm for his work. And he shared that with coworkers, with students, and anyone who would listen. His loss is a loss for the botanical world, um, the Philippines, and actually the entire world. And I pray for justice for Leonard and for his colleagues. I think if Leonard were still here, he'd still be out there in the forest, cataloging plant life and discovering new species. 
and all with that great big smile lighting his face. Leonard, we miss you. Si Sir Leonard ang aking mentor pagdating sa plant identification or sa plant taxonomy. Kaya kung ano man yung aking mga nalalaman or knowledge tungkol dito, sa kanya nang galing yun. Siya ang nagturo sa akin. Uh, nagkakilala kami ni Sir Leonard noong ako'y estudyante pa lamang way back 1993 nagkaroon kami ng uh, expedition sa Sierra Madre so kasama namin siya na naglakad from San Mariano Isabela uh, to Ilagan Isabela hanggang sa Palanan Isabela pero nung pagkagraduate ko noong 1994 Uh, dito ako nagkaroon ng chance na makatrabaho siya. So magkasama kami for two years sa uh, Conservation International. Pero noong 2002 hanggang 2008, dito mas matagal yung aming pinagsamahan uh, sa Conservation International. So magkasama ulit kami sa trabaho. Uh, lahat ng mga lakad namin sa mga bundok sa Sierra Madre man yan, sa Palawan hanggang sa Mindanao magkasama kami yan most of the time uh, si Sir Leonard sa trabaho siguro siya na yung kakilala kong pinaka-passionate sa kanyang trabaho sa kanyang mga ginagawa lalong lalo na pagdating sa halaman uh, kapag meron siyang specimen or meron siyang halaman na medyo puzzle sa kanya, hindi niya yan tatantanan, hindi niya yan tutulugan uh, basta't may kapeng barako hindi niya yan tutulugan hanggat hindi niya malaman or hindi siya magkaroon ng idea kung ano yung pangalan ng halaman na yan or kung ano yung halaman na yan so ganun, ganun siya kapasyonate eh, sa kanyang trabaho uh, siguro kung nabubuhay pa ngayon si Sir Leonard baka baka magkasama pa kami ngayon sa trap sa Bimbi Project kasi si Sir Leonard isa siya sa mga nag-design or isa siya sa nag-isip tungkol sa Bimbi Project uh, dito niya ito noon yung isang kanyang yung isa niyang uh, advocacy dati yung lagi yung sinasabi sa amin na sa forest restoration daw dapat ang uh, itanim natin yung taga rito sa atin meaning yung mga indigenous species so yun, yun yung isang uh, advocacy niya na sa ngayon dito sa binhi yun yung aming Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life
Para po sa inyong 10th year uh, death anniversary, tutula po kami ng mahabang-mahaba at si Hazel po ay sesenyas. Ito na po ang tula para sa inyo, sir. Parang kailan lang namumundok sa palanan, sampung taon na pala ang nakaraan. Hirot di na bawasan, patuloy ang pagunita. Aming tagumpay ngayon kay Sir Leonard. Nagsimula. Si Hazel nagpapakadalubhasa sa ecotoxicology, nag-aaral paano maibsan laso ng tao sa paligid. Ako'y nagtuturo sa kabataan ng ethnobotany ng halaga ng samutsaring halaman, kanilang mabatid. Habang ako din ay nananaliksik sa raplisya, simbolo ng hitik na likas yaman ng ating bansa. Kaya pinatatuko ito sa aking likod bilang pangako sa iyo na di ako nakakalimot. Nasa wika sa pag-ani ng mga binhi sa gubat, kami ang mga binhi na ngayoy umusbong. Patuloy kami sa pagsunod sa iyong mga yapak para diyan sa langit di ka magsumpong. Miss ka namin, Sir Leonard, ngayon at kailanman. At sa pagdiriwang ng iyong alaala, pangako, Pexman. Walang patid namin ipaglalabang ating kalikasan upang siya ring matamasa ng kinabukasan. Ng kinabukasan, si Deris Leonard. <laughs> okay, bye, Sir. Ito na po ang aming munting tula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to Daddy, I was named in honor of the great Swedish naturalist. Na tulad nating lahat ay tunay na nagmamahal sa inang kalikasan at sa samot saring buhay na kinupkop nito. Pangalan din ito ng isang hardy herb na extreme northern latitudes na nag, namumulaklak kahit sa kasagsagan ng pagyayelo. Tulad daw ng bagong tatay, bagong adjustment sa kanyang napa, napakalaglag na lifestyle. Kailangan magpalit ng diapers, magtimpla ng padede, magpatulog, magpatahan ng iyak kasi iyakin ako. Kahit man lang sa mga rare instances na siya ay nasa bahay sa pagitan ng fieldwork, pusong tatay daw siya. Kahit ako ay nakasimangot. He has all the reasons to be a dotting father. Yan si Leonard ko, my dotting father. Hello everyone. Um, today I'm here um, with you to remember and to celebrate the life of Sir Leonard ko. Um, to remember that 10 years ago we have all um, experienced tremendous loss um, 
His family felt the loss. The whole scientific community felt the loss. Family and friends, students, co-teachers, um, colleagues. We all um, woke up to that very sad news that day that Sir Leonard has passed. But today, I also would like to take this opportunity to celebrate his life. Hi, um, I went and dug for this picture and used it as my background so I could show you. This was on my first trip to Palanan. I went with my batchmates, Raul, Jean and Hazel, Chico, who was our plant taxo teacher. Um, and as the kids these days would say, like mind blown, like that. That was that for me, that trip. Um, Sir Leonard just like knew every single species of plant that we came across. Uh, he knew which volume of Merrill it would appear in and roughly like which page it would be in. You know, not exactly, but like maybe plus minus 50 pages or whatever, but like really, he knew. Uh, it was just, it was so impressive that you couldn't be anything but be inspired you know, to kind of want to be, as you say, like, be like Mike, and that's the case, like, be like Leonardo Co. Um, yeah, you've actually been gone longer than I've known you. This was taken, this picture was taken in 2001. So we went to many places in those nine years. Um, <laughs> that's where I learned the word Kaladkarin, right? Uh, you'd ask if you wanted to go somewhere and, well, nobody had to drag me anywhere, which I think is what the word Kaladkarin means, right? Like Kaladkad, Kinaladkad, drag you. But anyway, there's no dragging me anywhere because it was quick to volunteer to join a trip. And, um, yeah, I, I miss those trips. Uh, your absence all these years has been felt deeply and probably will be for forever. You've had a very um, huge impact um, in many people's lives. And yeah, there's nothing else to say, but I'm, we miss you. Uh, but keep botanizing with Sir Dan and Sir PM, wherever you guys are. Um, and we'll do the same here, right? Bye. Nakilala ko si Sir Leonard noong 2002 nung ginagawa ko yung undergraduate thesis ko. Sa palanan yung site, dapat punta ko doon pero hindi ako pinayagan ng tatay ko. So, um, hindi na lang ako natuloy. Ginawa ko na lang virtually yung mga gagawin ko dapat sa field. So, Sir Leonard, nung nakilala ko siya, tinanong niya sa akin ano ba yung gusto kong gawin. Tapos sabi ko, gusto ko maghanap ng mga medicinal plants sa sa gubat. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, ah, ano yun? Ethnobotany. Tapos sabi ko, ah, yun ba tawag doon? So, yun, alam ko na anong tawag doon. So, um, simula noon, um, nakita ko siya sa herbarium. Tapos, naging faculty din ako sa UP. And then, tuloy-tuloy yung mga projects namin. Tapos, sinuportahan niya ako sa mga ginagawa ko na academically sa career. So, yung pag-masters ko, tsaka pag-PhD. So, yung masters ko sa Palanan din. Um, tapos, nakapunta rin ako sa Palanan with um, Sir Leonard noong 2005. And then, so, how do I keep his memory alive? First of all, pagdadasal ako siya every day. So, naalala ko siya. Then, I see plants. Mga naalala ko yung mga tinanong niya sa akin about plants at ng botany ecology, pinapasa ko rin yun sa mga kakilala ko, especially my children, especially when they're older. And medyo lalo lang din ako ngayon, pero um, when my kids get older, um, mabalik na ako sa conservation because and I'm going through, I'm, yung bala ko is to go through education. Um, how do I see Sir Leonard? He is a person, a friend, co-worker, it's passion. So, yung passion niya is ibang level, sobrang taas. He's very passionate about what he does. I don't know anyone else as passionate as him pagdating sa halaman. 
and then nakahanga talaga yung ano niya depth and breadth of knowledge you know encyclopedia encyclopedic and photographic memory si Sir Leonard parang alam niya lahat ayan as a person, sana okay na siya as a person and as a friend actually more of a uh, tatay yung tingin ko sa kanya than, than a friend is a mentor but he's also a good friend I see him na um, he cares a lot about other people marami siyang sinasabi pero deep inside, he has a really soft heart and uh, but he's also a very good um, uh, father to Lene sinabi niya sa akin, oh you're He's really trying to be the best dad he can. And nakita ko naman yun. Na, ano din, sasama na si Lene sa Arbayo. Dati, tapos na, ano din. Um, as a worker, he's very hardworking. <laughs> yun nga, nakatira na sa Arbayo si Sir Leonard. And, and because of his passion, it drives him. And it his passion, his knowledge, his expertise, his galing niya, is, that's what made him the best. Talaga. I think, um, so long, it's really a big loss na, na wala siya so early. So, kung si Sir Leonard ay andito pa with us and at his retirement, ang nakita kong future niya ay nasa herbarium pa rin siya. I don't think kaya niya iwanan yung herbarium and he's doing his field work at Palanan Plot tas with EDC and um and and dami dami niyang projects he'll still be the expert I believe um he'll still siya pa rin yung pupunta ng mga tao at respeto ng mga tao na as in the one holding the most knowledge about um plants especially since ang lawak ng knowledge niya eh right now yung iso ng mga botas is ka-specialized na lang sa mga family or genus tapos pero si Sir Leonard alam niya dami niya talaga alam marami siyang magdi-discover um, he'll name a lot of new plants he's dami siyang publications um, tuloy pa rin ang sikat and I think he'll still be the same Sir Leonard na humble and makulit and um, mabait and yan hindi ko na nasa herbarium na siya until retirement by choice pero kikilala na siya ng kilala na siya eh, pero mas kikilala na pa siya as through the years and ang dami pa rin pupunta sa herbarium just to see him so yan yeah. siguro si Sir Leonard mga 2005-2006. Siyempre, sa herbarium. So, sa Institute of Biology na herbarium. So, nandun siya nung nagsifisis ako. Tapos, meron siyang mga RA na tinuturuan. Tapos, siyempre, pag may halaman siya na nakikita, kinikwiz niya palagi yung mga RA niya. So, ganun ko siya nakilala. Siguro yung pinaka-memorable na Uh, experience ko with Sir Leonard noong 2007. So, noong 2007, nagtuturo na ako noon. First time ko magturo. Tapos, field biology. Tapos, uh, in-invite namin siya na sumama sa field namin sa Kanawan, sa Bataan. Tapos, dahil ako yung, yung uh, sa plant group, so, madalas ko siyang kasama. Tapos, first time ko mag-field, first time ko siyang makasama rin sa field. Tapos, ang daming quirkiness ni Sir Leonard. So, uh, supposedly, mga two hours lang ata yung hike pa akyat dun sa site namin. Tapos, inabot siguro kami mga six hours. So, minsan akala nila parang may masama na nangyari sa amin o meron baka na aksidente. Hindi nila alam. Tumitigil si Sir Leonard mga every ten steps. 
Tapos siguro dahil first time niya rin akong nakasama, gusto niya sabihin sa akin lahat ng alam niya. So, sabi niya sa akin kung anong page ng librong to, yung description ng halaman na to, kung ano yung family, kung anong gamit, so ganun. So, talagang ang daming information na binibigay ni Sir Leonard. Pero ikaw parang hingal na hingal ka na, kinakagat ka ng lamok, so hindi mo rin masyado concentrate Pero para sa akin, yun lang experience na makasama yung isang tanyag na botanist sa Pilipinas siya sa buong mundo yung makasama si Sir at marinig siya at lahat ng knowledge niya tungkol sa mga halaman. Isa yun sa mga field work na hanggang ngayon kahit na ang dami ko na ring ibang napuntahan hanggang ngayon hindi hindi ko yun makakalimutan. Leonard is a dear friend. We grew up together in science. I met Leonard a long time ago like in 1978. Sabi niya, join ka sa Sama Peel, member ako. Talk sa mga tao dito. I became an active member of that Filipino-based organization in Diliman. We always talk about idea of plants. Later, he also recruited me to be a member of the Botanical Society. He would invite me together with our friends in botany to eat in their restaurant in Caloocan. One time he was sad. He told me he had acad problems. Sabi ko na lang, sige aral lang para maayos yan. He, together with Ang Put, now in Hong Kong, and Benny Tan, one of his mentors, introduced me to mountain climbing. I went to grad school at the same time, an RA in botany. Leonard was working also as research assistant to Dr. Samora, his mentor in Ferns, as well as Dr. Vera Santos. He goes on field work for biodiversity studies, as well as maintaining the herbarium, where he was able to further hone his knowledge in taxonomy. At a certain point, he worked in the Cordillera for an NGO, where later he was able to publish the book Medicinal Plants of the Cordillera. We were together in UP Baguio. He would cook for us while we do the dishes. On weekends, he would climb Mount Santo Tomas, and one time, we released the cloud rat that was given to us by, geo by the geologists from a mining company. I wonder if the cloud rat is still alive. It was time to go back to Diliman. I was a faculty member with two kids to take care of. GP, my husband, is also a good friend of Leonard. We further developed their barium together with Dan Langunsad, his dear friend, and Ramon Bandong, whom they trained for the identification of plants. Their barium was practically his home. I was not afraid to stay late in Pub 4 to mentor my students because I knew Leonard was there. Later, he became connected with Conservation International together with Perry Ong, but still his ways was Pub 4. It was him who started the permanent plot studies in Palanan, Isabela. One time, sabi niya, Tama ka, Tess, ang ganda doon. Maganda ang biodiversity. Leonard later on built his family, Glenda and Linnea Marie, where Linnea would be brought to the herbarium occasionally. He continued to develop the herbarium. He had several reference books, doing fieldwork, in Palanan, aside from other parts of the country, increasing the plant collections in the herbarium of the Institute of Biology, UP Diliman. Field work is one of his passions. This is where you can collect new records of plants as well as new species. One day, Ivy sent me a text message of what happened to Leonard. The following day, Kathy sent me a text message that Dan has passed away. We were all very, very sad. These two taxonomists have joined PM Zamora, Dr. Vera Santos, Benny Tan in heaven. I wonder what they're discussing in heaven. I know there was injustice in your case, Leonard. May you rest in peace and till we meet again. Thank you. So, nakilala ko si Sir Leonard noong 2006 kasi yun yung time na pumasok ako sa Institute of Biology. Naalala ko na naandun siya lagi sa may herbarium. Tapos, paminsan, dun siya natutulog na nakikita ko kasi sa umaga, uh, uh, may mga toothbrush siya na dala, tapos pumupunta siya doon sa, sa CR ng boys, may paliguan kasi doon. So, nakakatuwa uh, na ganun siya ka-passionate na he was spending all his time in the herbarium, no? Uh, tapos, makikita mo na napaka-passionate niya na tao kasi pag nagkwento siya patungkol sa gubat, 
Sa mga halaman na nakikita niya, lumiliwanag yung mukha niya. Yung mata niya ng lalaki, no? So, he was oozing with passion. Uh, that was very evident, no? Uh, the first time you talk to him, um, yun kaagad ang kinukwento niya. Puro lahat scientific name ng mga halaman. Nagkukwento siya ng mga katatawanan sa field, nahuhulog siya sa bangin. Nagkukwento din siya na may mga halaman siya na gusto niyang ibalikan sa mga bundok-bundok na kung saan siya napupunta. Kasi sabi niya, mga new species yun. So yung mga halaman na yun, hinihintay lang na mamulaklak o di kaya ay... Uh, gusto niya makakuha pa ng specimens ng mga bago para to make sure na talagang uh, totoong mga bagong species yun. No? So, yun ang nakakalungkot kasi hindi na mapabalikan yung mga halaman na yun. Yung mga gubat na yun. Wala nang eksperto kagaya niya na pwedeng balikan yung mga halaman na yun. And at the rate na we are going no, sa deforestation ngayon, pagkakaubos ang gubat sa paligid natin, uh, malamang marami sa mga halaman na ito, ma mawawala na lang na hindi sila ma-describe. So, yung trabaho na ginagawa dati ni Sir Leonard, um, ganun na lang ka-importante. No? Um, grabe yun, grabe yun si Sir Leonard, kahit na tuyo na yung dahon, kahit na hindi buo yung dahon, tangkay lang ng dahon. Pakita mo sa kanya, alam niya kung ano. Ganun siya kagaling, hayop sa galing, no? Um, tapos ang ang maalala ko doon, napaka-generous niya with what he knows. Hindi siya nag-atubilin na ikwento sa iba yung um, mga alam niya, no? Um, kaya maraming gustong matuto sa kanya, no? Uh, yung iba nga sa kanila, talagang ngayon, uh, naging mga siyentipiko na rin. Yung iba, napakagaling din ng mga taxonomist, no? Uh, dahil sa influensya niya. Dahil napaka, um, he was an inspiration to a lot of uh, young people, no? Yun yung naalala ko. Um, so, yun. Yun, uh, I really miss Sir Leonard. He was such a character. He was such a colorful, uh, he had such a colorful personality, no? And uh, I hope na all these years, No? Uh, magkaroon na rin ng hustisya yung ating pinaglalaban. My first uh, meeting with Sir Leonard is a typical one, as with many of my friends and colleagues in IB. It was at the herbarium with him beside his table with a plant specimen in one hand and with a hand lens or some book or paper on the other. Well, that image of him will be the lasting image in my mind of Sir Leonard. Uh, the passionate plant taxonomist, probably one of the greatest the country has ever known, whose knowledge of medicinal plants, particularly those of the Cordilleras, being his single most important legacy. Now, I am not a plant person myself, and quite embarrassingly, I am probably one of those biologists in the Institute who is plant blind. So, hanggang santan, gumamela, manga, tamo lang ang kaya ko. So, I would like to remember Sir Leonard other than as a taxonomist. I would like to remember him as the passionate cook. Sir Leonard, uh, when he prepares or cooks uh, kikyam, ang sarap-sarap talaga. One time ko na natikman and I never forgot it. Tapos yung tuna sashimi na inihanda niya sa, at kinain namin sa room 4113 when we were uh, still at the pavilion 4. And uh, most importantly, I would like to remember Sir Leonard when he finally obtained his BS in Botany in 2008. We have this uh, picture of him during our recognition program in IB. Uh, lagi niyang sinasabi sa amin noon na wala naman sa kanya kung hindi rin mag-grant sa kanya ang degree. Kasi noon na pinag-debatihan pa kung pwede pang i-grant niya, it was being appealed to the university. Pero kakaiba po ang tuwa at uh, admittedly iyak niya nang mag-grant nga iyon sa kanya, yung degree niya. He was, how should I say it, ecstatic. And he showed his humility by expressing his profound gratitude to Sir Perry and Ma'am RR, to IB, and to the university. I sincerely think it was one of his greatest moments. So we kept this picture and we have placed it in the IB lounge to remember Sir Leonard, his struggles, and eventually his well-deserved triumph. IB will make sure his legacy will live on. Good morning, everybody. 
it is really a privilege and also my pleasure to be part of this tribute tribute to a great man a great mind Leonard Co. and I'm happy to, to see all of you and greet you a pleasant Sunday when, when I think about Leonard I think about all his work and I feel dwarfed by his gigantic, his gargantuan knowledge about, about uh, nature, especially about plants. I first met Leonard through Perry O. During the 1990s uh, project, I think it was a conservation international project, on priority setting of conservation areas in the Philippines. And during this time, I met a lot of botanists like Daniel Gunsad, of course, Barry Ong, and uh, some of the people in UP, UPLB and UP Diliman. Especially the young ones I met, uh, which we call Paris Angels. When I, uh, when I think about Barry's uh, involvement in that project, he was he was able to gather all the all the uh, scientists, all those who were working uh, on uh, on nature, on wildlife, plants and animals, and uh, it was there that uh, I realized how little my knowledge about plants. I'm not a botanist. And When I when I think about the the field trips, although I only join one field trip with Leonard, I realize how he I, I see his passion, his his uh, deep knowledge, understanding about uh, the nature, the habitat of of, of uh, plants. He even talked to plants. As I saw him, and uh, heard him talking about, oh, this plant should not be here, this plant should be somewhere, this is covered by pollinators, and all, the, all these things, so, tiny, uh, tiny bits of wisdom that I, I learned during uh, work, uh, field trips with him. I, uh, I know that his life was short, but he loved a lot of, of uh, knowledge, a lot of, uh, of uh, right writings about uh, about uh, plants and uh, I think that the passion brought him hmm, his untimely death also so I, I wish that all of us here will pray for the eternal repose of his soul and uh, I hope that within my lifetime we will see justice of the senseless and untimely killing or death of Leonard. So to the family of Leonard, especially Glinda, I admire your strength, admire your uh, perseverance in seeking justice for your husband. And uh, I wish you luck in all these cases. And I hope to see you again. So to everybody, good morning. The person who died by the bullet is a man of peace, an environmentalist, a Filipino-Chinese who has loved Filipino people, a barefoot scientist, a scientist of people.